Ciao, come stai? Welcome to the lively world of Italian, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. We're going to have a great time learning all about nouns, adjectives, definite and indefinite articles before moving on to verbs. You'll learn to conjugate the present tense verbs in three groups, A-R-E, E-R-E, and I-R-E verbs. Then we tackle those funky irregular verbs before we teach you how to use useful interrogatives and how to unlock the world of cognates, boosting your Italian vocabulary to inconceivable heights. Get ready to master Italian. Your standard Deviant Italian program is on DVD, which means you can really control your viewing experience. So make the most of it. Here's how. You'll always start off from a main menu. Anytime you want to start over, just select Menu on your keypad. That'll bring you back to the main menu. From there, the world is your oyster. You can view through the program straight through, select which lesson you'd like to watch, refresh your memory with a quick review, tune into some helpful info, take L'Espresso, a comprehensive final test, or learn about the standard deviants, the hosts of this Italian DVD. You can also hit Previous and Next any time in the program to jump between major sections without returning to the main menu. E molto bene! We're the Standard Deviants. We've made it our mission to break down this intimidating Italian stuff into a fun and easy language you can master. We even hired a few talented Italian professors to share their Italian expertise. We learned it first, and now we're going to teach it to you like it's never been taught before. So, grab some cannoli, jump in a bean bag, and get ready to not only learn Italian, but love it. Amore. Along the way, you'll also meet our lost backpacking friends. They took a wrong turn at Albuquerque and somehow missed their flight to Italy. But they're making the best of it. We even give you the benefit of a great Italian tradition, the siesta. Literally, it's a wonderful midday break. In the lively world of Italian, the basics, we gave you all the basic ingredients to start speaking Italian, including the Italian alphabet, a complete guide to Italian pronunciation, and an introduction to Italian subject pronouns and verbs. If you're having trouble with any of these concepts, you might want to check it out. Now that we got that out of the way, we'll pick up where we left off with Italian nouns, indefinite and definite articles. We'll then move on to an in-depth look at Italian verbs. Part 1. Building sentences. Nouns, adjectives, and the indefinite article. We think that the best way to get you into Italian mode is to let you hear Italian speakers talking. So we'll start off every new part with a dialogue. Packed within each new dialogue will be key concepts you're about to learn. Think of it as a sneak preview. Don't worry if you don't know every word. Just try to absorb as much of it as you can. You'll hear the same dialogue again at the end of each part. By that point, you should feel pretty comfortable with it. Ciao, Rosanna. Ciao, bello. Come stai? Bene. E tu? Mm, bene. Dove vai? Vado al negozio con Hoss. Ho bisogno di scarpe nuove. Sì, è vero. Hai bisogno di scarpe nuove. Conosco Hoss? No, non conosci Hoss. Hoss è intelligente, forte, bello e americano. Oh, mamma mia. Di dov'è? È di Denver. Oh, Denver, bellissimo. Devo andare. A presto. Ciao. Ciao, Rosanna. If that dialogue was a little over your head, don't fret. Just think of it as a sneak preview of what's coming up. It was full of nouns and adjectives you'll learn in this part. We'll repeat the same dialogue at the end of the first part of this program. By then, you should be able to breeze right through. Let's start with the nouns. Section A, nouns, nomi. Let's learn some common nouns. These are nouns we'll keep using throughout the program. Siesta, i nomi. Un abito means a suit. Un café is a café. The same word is used for coffee. Un negozio, a store. Un ospedale, a hospital. Un ragazzo, a boy. Uno sport, a sport. Uno studente, a student. Un treno, a train. Uno zaino. A backpack. Una amica, a female friend. Una biblioteca, a library. Una chiesa is a church. Una zia, an aunt. 
un'idea, an idea, una lezione, a lesson, una macchina, is a car, una ragazza, a girl, una strada, a street, un università, a university. Okay, that's our first siesta, our first set of vocabulary. Learn them, live them, now let's get ready to use them. Nouns are people, places, things, and ideas. Nouns are treated differently in Italian than they are in English. In Italian, all nouns have a gender, meaning they are either masculine or feminine. English speakers only apply gender to living things. We say her if we're talking about a girl, and him if we're talking about a guy. Makes sense to me. What's with the Italians? Nouns that refer to people have the same gender as the person they name, but other than that, there's not exactly any rhyme or reason to how it goes. For example, let's take two random things, say, license plates and hats. In Italian, license plates are feminine and hats are masculine. How do we know that? You can't look at license plates or hats and see any reason they should be feminine or masculine. They just are. Noun gender seems pretty arbitrary in lots of languages, not just in Italian. It's done in French, Spanish, and German, among lots of other languages. There's one more noun from our dialogue to learn. Scarpa. Shoe. Let's think about the gender of the word scarpa. There's nothing about a shoe that makes us think masculine or feminine. They could be either. But in Italian, a noun's gender is randomly assigned, and in Italian, the word scarpa happens to be feminine, no matter who's wearing it. You can usually figure out the gender of an Italian noun by looking at the way the word is spelled, specifically the last letter. Most Italian words end in the vowels O, A, or E. A very few nouns end in consonants, which tells us that they're borrowed from other languages. Here are the general rules to identify the gender of Italian nouns. We're talking in general now, but the guideline is that if the noun ends in an O or a consonant, it's masculine. Abito, negozio, ragazzo, treno, and zaino are example of masculine nouns that end in an O. Sport is our example of a masculine noun that ends in a consonant. Remember, if a noun ends in an O or a consonant, it's a masculine noun. The words we've talked about so far make it pretty easy to tell if they're masculine. But hark, an exception through yonder window breaks. If the last letter of a noun is an E, you have a toss-up. Nouns that end in E have an equal chance of being masculine or feminine. It's heads. Studente and ospedale are masculine nouns ending in an E. We'll cover some feminine E nouns. For now, just know that with nouns ending in E, you will have to memorize the gender when you learn each new vocabulary word. In general, if a noun ends in an A, it is feminine. From our list of siesta nouns, amica, Biblioteca, chiesa, idea, macchina, ragazza, strada, università, and zia are feminine nouns. They all end in A. Seems easy, right? No, oh, well, not so fast. Remember that tricky E? Nouns that end in E don't give their gender away. They might be masculine, they might be feminine. Who knows? <laughs> Ospedale and Studente are masculine, and automobile and lezione are feminine. There's no indication of gender. The only way to know the gender of these words is to learn it when you learn the vocabulary. You just gotta memorize it. The only time you can be sure of the gender of a noun that ends in an E is if the noun refers directly to a person. Let's use Robert and Roberta to explain. If we were talking about Robert, saying that he was a singer, cantante, we would know in this case that cantante was masculine. Same goes for Roberta. If Roberta was the singer we were talking about, cantante would be feminine. So far, looking at the final letter of nouns has been pretty helpful in determining the gender of a noun. But there are some fascinating exceptions. Here's an easy one first. If the noun ends in an accented vowel, there's no indication of the gender. And the interesting one, if a noun is an abbreviated form of a longer noun, the final letter is an unreliable indicator of the gender of the noun. Abbreviated nouns keep the gender of the longer noun they are derived from. Okay, let's take the word photo. Look at the last letter. It's an O. Hmm, 
Well, it seems like the word should be masculine because nouns ending in O are generally masculine. Here's the thing. Photo is actually short for fotografia. Ah, look at that. Fotografia ends in an A. So we can guess that it's feminine, which it is. So when we shorten it to photo, it's still feminine. There are few nouns like this, but for the most part, they're straightforward. Just remember that some nouns might have been shortened. Now let's review. All Italian nouns have a gender. They're either masculine or feminine. You can tell the gender of most nouns by looking at the last letter. Most nouns end in a vowel. In general, nouns ending in an O or a consonant are masculine, while nouns ending in an A are feminine. If a noun ends in an E, it's a toss-up. The noun could either be masculine or feminine. If a noun is a shortened version of another word, like photo, it keeps the gender of the longer word. So that's gender for you. Now let's talk about a noun's number. No, not a noun's favorite number, but how many of a particular noun you have. Here, look. Nouns and number. Nouns change with number. What's this mean? Well, when there is more than one of any noun, that noun becomes plural. In English, to make nouns plural, we usually just add an S. One shoe, two shoes. One tenor, two tenor, three tenors, three tenors. In Italian, as in English, nouns have different forms when they are put into the plural. To put a noun in its plural form, we need to change the last letter. Here are the basic rules for making a noun plural. Again, it all comes down to the last letter. All nouns that end in O or an E change to an I to form the plural. All nouns that end in an A just change the A to an E. Let's try a few starting with nouns ending in O. Un abito, one suit, changes to due abiti, two suits. The final O is changed to an I. Un treno changes in the same fashion. Un treno, one train, changes to due treni, two trains. We said that nouns ending in E also change to an I. This is true whether the noun is masculine or feminine. The masculine noun, un ospedale, changes to due ospedali, and una lezione changes to due lezioni. To make nouns that end in an A plural, replace the A with an E. Una scarpa, one shoe, is due scarpe, two shoes. That's pretty cool. I think we're getting the hang of it. Una mica changes to due amiche. Notice that when you want to keep the hard C sound, you have to put an H. So changing a noun from singular to plural isn't that hard. Just remember to replace the last letters of the nouns that end in a vowel. Nouns that end in O or E change to I, and nouns that end in A change to E. That's it. We saved the best for last. There are three kinds of nouns that do not change in the plural. That's right, they're just the same old word, singular, and plural. This is Italian Dog with Andy. Tell me, random person on the street, what is the plural of moose? Moose? What is the plural of goose? I believe it's goose. It's geese. Yeah. We've stumped her. We've stumped the person on the street. You've been watching Italian Dog with Andy. We have words in English that don't change from singular to plural, like sheep, fish, and moose. In Italian, there are three groups of nouns that don't change when they go from singular to plural. One, nouns that end in consonants. Two, nouns that end in accented vowels. And three, abbreviations of longer nouns. Let's look at each one. First, nouns that end in a consonant. The noun we learned that ends in a consonant is sport. You don't change a thing when making these nouns plural. Uno sport and due sport. Words that end in accented vowels don't change in the plural. That's right, one cafe, 
un cafe is the same as two cafes. Due cafe. Remember our abbreviated nouns. You know, like photo, the word that keeps the gender of the longer word fotografia that it comes from. Abbreviated words are the third and final kind of word that does not change when it's plural. That's right. Abbreviated words do not change in the plural form. Una foto becomes due foto. Nothing changes about the word foto, no matter how many photos you have. That's all there is to nouns and numbers. Let's review before we move on. There are three things to remember about pluralizing nouns. First, you know that every noun, the O or an E in the singular form, will end in an I in the plural form. Next, you know that any noun that ends in an A in the singular form will end in an E in the plural form. And third, you know that there are three kinds of nouns that do not change at all in their plural form. The three groups of nouns that do not change in their plural form are nouns that end in a consonant, nouns that end in an accented vowel, and nouns that are really abbreviated words. That's all for now on pluralizing nouns. It's time to learn some Italian adjectives. Section C, nouns and adjectives. Let's start the section off right with a siesta. This siesta is packed full of useful adjectives. After all that intense noun stuff, I'm sure you could use a break. Siesta time. Adjetivi. Allegro is cheerful. Triste is sad. Basso is short. Alto is tall. Nero is black. And Biondo is blonde. Bello is handsome or beautiful. Brutto is ugly. Vecchio is old. Giovane is young. Nuovo is new. Cattivo is bad. Buono is good. Grande is big. Piccolo is small. Magro is thin. Grasso is fat. Stupido is stupid. Intelligente is intelligent. Every single word you just learned is an adjective. Adjectives do the same thing in Italian as they do in English. Describe nouns. In the last siesta, you learned some great vocabulary. These adjectives are words you'll use in your everyday Italian. Let's put two and two together and see how these new adjectives work with the nouns we already know. In Italian, you have to make sure that your nouns and your adjectives agree. What do we mean agree? It can be a little tricky at first. In English, adjectives only have one form. Take the adjective short, for example. You could say short girl, short boy, short girls, and short boys. The word short, the adjective, doesn't change to describe different subjects. But in Italian, an adjective must agree with the noun in gender and number. Stick around, we'll explain. When you're learning these adjectives as vocab, Notice that there's two possible endings, an O or an E. Now these endings should clue you into the fact that this is the masculine singular form of the adjective, which is a form we use to describe the masculine singular noun. Much like uh, the smell of perfume will tell you of approaching lady. Anyway, this is usually the form of adjective you'll run into when learning this new vocabulary. Take a look at this. Legs. Look at the adjectives intelligente and basso. Both of these nouns are in their masculine singular form. That is, the form they have when they describe a masculine singular noun. Remember that O and E are the vowels you might find on the end of masculine nouns as well. Well, O is strictly masculine, not at all a feminine ending. So a word like basso will have to change form before it can describe anything feminine. What will it change to? You guessed it, the feminine A. So the feminine singular form of basso is basa. E is the dual purpose vowel. We saw masculine and feminine nouns ending in E, so we know E is a perfectly acceptable feminine ending. And in fact, adjectives like intelligente that end in E for the masculine singular use exactly the same form for the feminine singular. So far you have basso and intelligente for masculine singular adjectives and basa and intelligente for feminine singular adjectives. 
If you want to make those plural, the old noun rules still apply. Anything that ends in O or E in the singular, be it feminine or masculine, changes to I. Anything that ends in A changes to E. In our dialogue, Stefano said that he was meeting Haas to go buy shoes. When Rosanna asked what Haas looked like, Stefano used the adjectives intelligent, intelligente, strong, forte, and handsome, bello. Jose intelligente, mm -hmm. forte, bello. Intelligente, forte, and bello are all adjectives in their masculine singular form. Why are they in that form in the dialogue? Because adjectives assume the traits of the noun that they describe, and Haas, Stefano's friend, is masculine singular. This illustrates the main point of Italian adjectives. Make sure you understand what the main point is. Adjectives have no gender or number of their own. They assume the traits of the noun they describe. Let's practice. Adjectives are commonly used to say what nationality a person is, as in our dialogue. In our dialogue, Stefano said that Haas was American. E americano? Let's start with americano, since it was used in our dialogue. The masculine singular form of American, americano, was used to describe hoss, a masculine singular noun. It ends in O, so we know that it has three more endings. Ragazzo americano, ragazza americana, ragazze americane, ragazzi americani. What about francese? Just like other adjectives you've learned that end in E, like intelligente, it will have two possible endings. It will end in an E in singular forms and in an I in the plural forms. In Italian, we have ragazzo francese and ragazza francese. In the plural, it's ragazzi francesi and ragazze francese. In this example, ragazzo francese, ragazza francese, and ragazze francesi. You saw that agreement doesn't necessarily mean that the noun and the adjective have the same ending. Adjectives can still agree in gender and number even if they don't have the same ending. We're warning you now because lots of students try to make things really easy and just attach the same endings. Just remember to make them agree, even if that gives them different final vowels, and you'll be fine. Now let's review by looking at some combinations of adjectives with nouns we have learned together. Before we give you more examples, we have to warn you. You may have already noticed that Italian adjectives come after the noun they describe. This seems backwards to English speakers, so it'll take a little getting used to. Idea. Intelligente. Idea intelligente. Idea intelligente. Ragazza. Alta. Ragazza alta. Ragazza alta. We just showed you examples of the norm. Adjectives usually follow the noun. There are a few adjectives that come before the noun. Since these are the exceptions to the rule, it's easy to just memorize these guys as exceptions. All of these exceptions are common, so don't skimp on learning this stuff. Nine of the adjectives we've already learned are exceptions and usually come before the noun. Bello and brutto, cattivo and buono, grande and piccolo, vecchio and giovane, and nuovo. There will be other Italian adjectives that will do this, but these are probably the most common and even these can come after the noun for extra emphasis. Pay attention to placement as you learn new adjectives. Let's look at some rule breakers in action before we move on. Vecchia. Bicicletta. Vecchia bicicletta. Vecchia bicicletta. Brutti. Zaini. Brutti zaini. Brutti zaini. That was a good combination of examples because you got a chance to see common adjectives that come before the noun and how our adjectives take the gender and number of some of the nouns we've learned. So you know that adjectives take the gender and number of the noun they describe. When deciding what ending to use, look at the adjective's ending in the masculine singular form. If it ends in O, like the adjective americano, it has four possible endings. 
If it ends in an E, like francese, it has only two possible forms. Remember, most adjectives are placed after the noun they describe. Also remember that agreement does not mean the noun and the adjective must always have identical endings. If you're having trouble with nouns or adjectives, this is a great time to stop the program and review. Next, we'll tackle indefinite articles. Section D, l'articolo indeterminativo. It's time to get into the indefinite article. In English, the indefinite articles, a and an, are used with singular nouns. A friend, an apple, a girl, a couch. In Italian, the indefinite article is used for these purposes and also corresponds to the number one. The difference is Italians have a few more forms than we do. Wouldn't you know it? It's really not all that hard. We'll break it down. There are four forms of the indefinite article. That's right, four. There are two feminine forms and two masculine forms for a grand total of four Italian indefinite articles. So you're thinking, how do you know whether to use a feminine form or a masculine form? It's common sense, really. The purpose of an indefinite article is to accompany a noun. If the article is used with a feminine noun, you'll use one of the two feminine indefinite articles. If the article is used with a masculine noun, you'll use one of the two masculine forms of the indefinite article. You decide what specific indefinite article to use by looking at the first few letters of the word that follows. If the noun is masculine, you will use either the indefinite article un or uno. Un is used in the masculine before words beginning in everything except a Z or an S plus a consonant. Uno is used for masculine articles before words that begin with a Z or an S plus a consonant. If the noun is feminine, you'll use either the indefinite article una or un apostrophe. Una is used in the feminine before words that begin with consonants and un apostrophe before words that begin with vowels. The apostrophe is a little strange. Let's spend a minute on this one. If the noun is feminine, you will use an apostrophe before words that begin with a vowel. You actually attach the indefinite article to the beginning of the next word. What you're doing is making a contraction. You do not hear the apostrophe, just talk right through it. By using the contraction, an awkward double vowel sound is avoided. We said that if the noun is masculine, un is used before anything except a z or an s plus consonant combination. So we would say un abito, un café, un negocio. Before a Z or S plus a consonant, though, we use uno in the masculine, like this. Uno sport. Uno zaino. Uno studente. But remember, it's the beginning sound of the word directly following un or uno that determines which form you'll use. So, even though you'd say uno studente, you'd have to say un nuovo studente because the indefinite article has an N following it. It's uno zaino, but it's un brutto zaino. You know that indefinite articles used with feminine nouns is really pretty simple. Yeah, like finding this Colosseum was supposed to be. It says it's right here. Well, you know the rule. You use the indefinite article una before words that begin with a consonant, and un apostrophe before words that begin with a vowel. Una, words begin in a consonant. Un apostrophe, words that begin in a vowel. Yeah. Now let's see how this rule works on the feminine nouns we've already covered. Here they are again. Here's the Colosseum. Whoa. I guess things aren't as great as they are in pictures. She is a beauty. Una amica. Una biblioteca. Una chiesa. Un'idea. Una macchina. Una ragazza. Una strada. Una scarpa. Un'università. Una zia. Una lezione. But again, it's the very next word that tells you which of the two feminine forms to use. Un amica, but una vecchia amica. Una biblioteca, but un'altra biblioteca. Un'idea, but una nuova idea.
<laughs> While the forms of the indefinite article are fresh in your mind, it's a great time to learn the adjective buono. That means good. Good like this fresh Italian air. You'll use buono all the time. It's one of those unusual adjectives that come before the noun, like cattivo. That means bad. Bad like any day away from Rome. Bello. Uh, that means pretty. Pretty like the word pretty. Brutto. That means ugly. Ugly like gym class on swim day. There are four forms of buono. Buon, buono, buona, and buon apostrophe. To determine which form to use, the first step is to look at the noun that buono is referring to. Ask yourself, what is it that is good? If the noun is masculine, buon or buono is used, and if the noun is feminine, buona or buon apostrophe is used. Can you see where this is going? I'll give you a clue. Buono follows 